Given the choice to get rid of a card early means more chances of drawing better stuff when we find it, so I'm going to throw away a strike here at the beginning. We're going to search for heavy hitters, so grabbing flex early is really going to help deal more damage in a big way. Remember, strength is big for finishing fights quickly. Also grabbing that Aura Calcium is really going to help mitigate taking small damage, and it's going to make blocking less of a priority and kind of a non-issue against these smaller enemies, so I'm glad we got that. And here we're going to see that flex is already coming in handy too, letting us take down our smaller enemies faster. And getting Whirlwind on floor 2 here really is setting the tone for the rest of the run. We get rid of any card that isn't Whirlwind and doesn't help it, and if the deck is small enough, then we're going to be able to draw it as often as possible. Grabbing Golden Idol is also going to help us out because we're going to get rid of more cards in the shops. We're going to find good relics, so we're definitely going to want that, and we can easily tank the max uh, hit point loss here. Even against elites and bosses here, we're not going to really waste much time blocking unless we don't have anything else to do. Uh, just make sure to time it out, deal as much damage as possible as you can. That 6 block every turn is really going to help against Lagavulin, um, so we're going to be able to save a little bit of that health later on too. really don't like doing elites when I'm on speed runs, but what can you do? Ink Bottle is going to be hit and miss with this deck. Um, I'm going to grab it anyways. And remember, we don't need much now that we have Whirlwind, so having extra cards just means less chance of drawing it and flex. Other things we're going to look for are really just ways to increase our card draw or gain more strength quickly. And of course, having more mana is going to make Whirlwind that much better. Having an Alma Mori is going to be great if we do run any of good, if we run into any good events that are going to give us curses. And we already have our deck here where we're drawing Whirlwind every other turn. So if we do have fights dragging on, um, having Bash is going to be helpful too. To make the enemy vulnerable is a good backup plan. Spot weakness was tempting, and in hindsight, I should have probably grabbed it to make the deck even crazier, but I honestly think it was a Twitch skip choice. I was playing Rush, so I didn't stop to register how much it would have helped. Remember, there is a difference between hurry up play and being rushed. Try not to overstep that line too much, or you're going to end up making mistakes like that, and those can really end up being costly if you make too many of them. Clash is another one I could have considered taking, but I really didn't need to have it. And again, it could have helped, but having more cards in the long run is costly. Fighting the Guardian here, our goal is really to just keep him vulnerable and draw a Whirlwind, rinse and repeat enough times, with a few necessary blocks right here at the end to take him down quickly. Drawing spot weakness with our potion there was really key to help as well. Just remember when you do hit him on his turn where he's blocking, he's going to hit you back. So having a little bit of block here and there might not be such a bad thing. But I'm really just going to tank most of it. The Runic Dome there is actually going to be really great because with this deck, we don't care what the enemy is doing. Our choice is the same every time. As, our choice is the same every time. Hit as hard and fast as possible using Whirlwind. 
So it's really just free energy and it's going to take that uh, 24 damage up to 32 every time we play Whirlwind. Artifact and Thorn enemies here are going to be the biggest downfall to this deck. Uh, this guy's big health is is going to really help, not going to help us out as much. Um, and we rely on multi hits and vulnerable that are either going to slow us down or cripple if we can't get those in. Grabbing fossilized helix here from the shop is really going to help with more early damage mitigation. And other than card removal here, there's not much else that's going to blow my skirt up. So I'm just going to keep throwing away strikes and keep defends for, for the oddball needs when we need them. I got really excited when I saw this event. Um, Necronomicon would have been awesome and sealed the winning deal here. Sadly, that wasn't the case, but Enchiridion pro provides other ways to gain strength, as we see here. So it's not a terrible pickup. It really did help us take down the bandits here. I really didn't see a whole lot that I thought was great here, but Thunderclap, it's okay. I don't know if it was the best choice. I probably could have just healed and played more aggressively later. I definitely don't need to take the Apparitions here. Those are long game cards. And it's time to call call in the comments section. If, subscribe if you like these videos. Uh, I really do want to give a big shout out to those of you that comment and leave feedback on every video. I really appreciate what you guys notice and suggest. Make sure to hit that like button too so this can get spread to more people. Uh, Bag of Marbles is just going to make us win harder. Now it's really going to be helpful finding ways to have that small deck with greater chances of drawing Whirlwind on turn one to have our enemies be vulnerable. And here we can see the ink bottle actually came into play. I wasn't sure if it would. Here, once again, we've got the ball guy with his big shield is going to slow us way down. Didn't take as long as the first one did, but it still took three or four turns and every little bit helps. So this is why I was kind of rushing on some of the other turns. really satisfying to take down uh, this pair of enemies in two, two or three turns. I really enjoyed that. As we draw towards the second boss, um, again, it's going to be a war of attrition. We don't want to focus on anything other than keeping him vulnerable and playing Whirlwind as much as possible. Uh, this regen potion is going to come in handy here because he's going to hit us pretty hard. But in the end, being able to draw flex and whirlwind at the same time is just really helpful. We didn't have any trouble taking him down at all.
demon form is tempting, but it just takes too long to ramp up our strength. It's really not going to help much unless we draw it on turn one. However, this boss reward choice was probably the hardest choice of the entire run. Um, having Empty Cage would have really helped to slim down our deck even more, but ultimately Coffee Dripper hitting Whirlwind for another 8 damage every time wins out in the end. Moving on to Act 3, we're at 10 minutes in, which is right where I like to be, just in case we hit the Giant Head or the Nemesis. Uh, I'm really just going to try and stay away from as many fights as I can, especially uh, those elites, and hit as many question rooms as we can find. I took a gamble on dual wield here. Um, just to have some more whirlwinds against the boss. I doubt it was necessary, but in the end it's not going to end up hurting anything, I don't think. Uh, finding pen nib at this shop is going to be helpful every once in a while, and getting rid of more cards does too. Our golden idol comes in once again. Uh, getting rid of that, going to have us a nice pot of gold at the end here. Let's see if we can't find another shop. At this point, I really could have started skipping these campfires to save myself a little bit more time. Uh, this animation is a long one, and since I can't even sleep anyways, um, I could have saved probably 30 to 45 seconds by skipping uh, some of these campfires. Bag of Preparation is going to help our turn one. Greater chance of getting the cards we need. And I'm, I'm just going to avoid elites, but we ended up hitting the Maw anyways. Um, I did get a little nervous having 300 damage to take down. Uh, takes a while, even when I'm hitting as hard as I can with, uh, with Whirlwind here. Um, again, just a little bit of extra time can tank the whole run. And that's where, you know, being able to play quickly without being rushed really comes in handy. And there I could have seen the pin nib was coming up next and played something else to have whirlwind hit even harder. Again, there are many ways I could have made this go even faster. Finding the incense burner is probably what saved this run in the end. Uh, getting that intangible every six turns uh, was huge with how aggressive we have to play. And again there, I should have uh, I should have played more on Clash instead of having extra whirlwinds. Just skipping more cards. There's another campfire I could have skipped. And the shapes were, were the only other fight I was really worried about here um, with the thorns that they have. And really glad I saved a little bit of uh, a block to take them on. And another flex, because why not? Uh, Spaghetti Monster here could have um, RNG'd against us poorly, but it didn't. Looks like we're going to take it down pretty easily. We still have Omamori here, so if he had decided to give us a curse, it wouldn't have been too bad. Another spot weakness I could have taken to, to get even stronger against the boss here. Let's have one final call call going into the final fight here.
Again, just doing everything I can to deal as much damage as possible. And those defense did end up coming in handy, I guess. Right here is where that Juggernaut really probably saved me from taking a whole lot of damage. Make sure to make use of those potions like we did. That strength potion right here on a big attack turn was huge. Once again, a spot I could have made better use of a pen nib. And that, my friends, is as close as you can possibly get to losing the whole run. But we made it with three and a half minutes to spare. 1634 is not bad. That does get us the speedrunner achievement. And that's how you do it. Once again, I do thank each and every one of you for watching and being part of this fun project I've taken on. I do appreciate you guys, and especially your cause and suggestions and feedback in the comments section. Stay tuned for more. I'm in a private beta for an upcoming card game that I think is going to be great. I'll have a review out for that soon, so keep an eye out. Otherwise, have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon.